an aunt calls out the family of her nephew's racist bullies. And this is a hell of a saga. Let me take you to the first video. My nephew has been going to Pazit Middle School for a while now. And we recently found out that while his mom is sending him to school thinking he's getting educated, he's meeting friends, he's having a good time, he is being harassed since August of 2022. Every day he goes to school, there are students that yell racial slurs at him. There are students that call him monkey, that call him the N-word. One in particular, and yes, I am going to talk about the family of this one boy because I believe racism isn't fermented in a bubble. Racism isn't fermented in a void. Parent, you raise your kids to go to school and be actual terrorist to other people. So please come to the front. Now, if you know my nephew, he is so quiet, so calm. It took him so long to say something because he just thought it was gonna die down. He didn't wanna make it a big deal. But he went to my sister-in-law in tears saying he could not handle it anymore. And she had to pull him out of the school this week. There's more video, here it is. These are the Boshnik, okay? This is the father. John Boschnik and the wife, Jane Boschnik. They both are CPAs. One works for Bruno Events in Birmingham, Alabama, and the other one works for Dent Moses LLC. They're also a CPA company. Their son, and I, bl I took the kids' faces out, their son is the one that comes to school every day saying the N-word, calling my nephew monkeys, and getting other kids to join in and calling my nephew names and making his life a living hell. One of my biggest fears with having kids was to raise them in the US. I was always, I'm always afraid of how their skin color is gonna make them a target before they even know what it is to not be liked simply because of something they cannot change. No kid is born hating somebody because of their skin color. It's taught behavior. It's the things that we as parents say in our home. It's the biases that we give to them and they go to school and they perpetuate it and cause trauma to other kids. Jane and John, this is on you. The family is speaking up to protect not only this young soul, uh, but to protect his dignity, his self esteem, his belief that he can still achieve and do whatever he wants to. Let's put up the picture for a mess. NBC 13 WT, WVTM did a great job covering the story. The child's mother, Mary Beth Ford, also confirmed her son was called a monkey. Her son was called the N-word at Louis uh, Pizzitz Middle School in Alabama. She recounted how her son told her, and I uh, told her saying, my son finally broke and collapsed. He said, I thought I could handle it. I thought it would stop if I stay quiet. I cannot take it anymore, he said. Mary Beth Ford gave that interview. Ford would eventually pull her son out of the school. On January 10th, the principal, Alicia Hansberger, sent a letter to the middle school parents addressing Ford and her family's concerns about racial intolerance. She addressed the media coverage prompted by Ford's sister in law. Some of you have been made aware of recent media coverage regarding our school. I cannot control the media, nor will I comment on any specific student at the institution. Our students and families have a right to privacy. Letter continues. I will tell you that when information is shared with me regarding our students and behavior that is unacceptable, our team addresses the concern immediately 
that follows the code of conduct outlined by our Board of Education, the principal added. Hansberger said families can be assured that the school will take a thorough approach to responding to student behavior in an effort to discipline with consequence and teaching. Um, notice what she did here, avoided the entire issue, uh, decided not to address the problematic issue that was highlighted during the media. Said nothing of being an advocate for those who are being bullied inside of that institution. Remember, there's a great disconnect between the campaign to stop bullying, which was led uh, by basically a white male majority on one camp and a white female majority on the other, depending on what the bullying issue was about. But you know what did not uh, was not allowed in that campaign? No, I mean this, it wasn't allowed racial bullying. And let me explain that. There was a movement similar in Georgia, anti-bullying campaign, I'm down with that. Uh, federal government, they created grant programs, anti-bullying campaign. If you can prove that your incidence of bullying goes down, then you get federal dollars. That's how the program works basically. Well, what about when somebody's called the N word? No, 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 that's not bullying, that's a different kind of incident. What do you mean? I'm in the meeting literally asking, what the hell do you mean? That's not bullying. That is the game that they played. So they decided not to affix the campaign of anti-bullying along with that of racial bullying. They wanted that to be separate. There's more to this story. Ford believes that more has to be done for her student, I mean her child obviously, as we all would. I think for too long, so long, we stay quiet thinking that an apology is enough. When what we really need from school systems like Vestavia is real and immediate change. And I don't think that would happen, that would have happened if I left my son there, she said. Noting that her family is not alone, and has received messages of support from other parents of color. Moving forward, we have to heal at this point. And my goal is to make sure students are not victims of this type of hate speech. Ford said, we see so many students that either consider suicide or some other method to relieve themselves of this. And I'm so thankful that my son spoke up, she said. Ford has now enrolled her son in a new school in Hoover, Alabama. Um, I'm familiar with the area. I go to law school in Alabama, and um, Hoover. I'm familiar with Hoover. You know, it's a mixed bag of Hoover as well. Uh, but obviously, that institution was not serving the student. I was actually being antithetical to the student's progress, in my opinion. Um, but here's the thing: until we look at children, all children, as worthy to be protected, to be advocated for, till we start doing that. You will continue to see the permeation of bias and racism beyond the school into the communities and into our nation. These students deserve our absolute best, our best. They deserve our best and we give them this. I stand with the family, I know you stand with the family as well. We will continue to update you as it develops, waiting for a conclusive result from the alleged investigation by the school. Sharing thoughts here. Well, it's not a real investigation and the principal, sure they investigate thoroughly and they stamp out all kinds of issues when they care, they don't mm -hmm. care, okay, you're right. And when I saw this beautiful mother and this sweet face son of hers, and I like to think that I can see who they really are through the picture. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I believe this is a great kid who was trying to protect his mother, his family and just try to do this heavy lift alone. And can you imagine that? Suicide, the mother talked about. Her, her little blurb there, her speech and that of her sister-in-law, the aunt spoke volumes and was just a beautiful thing to unpack as compared to the principal. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so glad that this young person has love. And, and I wanna say this mm -hmm. to you, if you happen to see the segment. Um, your potential is limitless. You can do whatever you choose to do. And hold on to the love that you have inside of that remarkable family of yours because everybody doesn't have that. And that is something special, all right? Wish you, wish you luck.